Hey everybody and welcome to Combat Saturday for August 1st, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond. Alright, today on Combat Saturday we are going to be looking at what might be considered an improvised weapon, certainly a an item that is commonly used as a weapon in D&D, but uh, also has other utility uses, and that is a flask of holy water. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in 5th edition and kind of back through the history of the game. Uh, holy water flask weighs one pound and costs 25 gold pieces and as an action you can splash that onto a creature in five within five feet of you or throw it up 20 feet shattering it on impact and it's a ranged attack against a target creature treating the holy water as an improvised weapon for purposes of the attack roll and if the target is a fiend or an undead it takes 2d6 radiant damage um, and then of course also you know, there's lots of uh, narrative uses for holy water. It's created for rituals and things like that, so it can be used in different religious rites or baptisms or all those kinds of things and whatnot that um, a cleric or a paladin may use it for. Uh, so 2d6 damage and it's radiant damage here in 5th edition. So let's go back and look back through history and see how this has evolved. We go all the way back to um, original D&D. Holy Water dealt 1d8 damage and it had the three increment ranges. 10 foot was the short range, up to 30 feet was the normal range, and then the maximum range you could use that was 50 feet. Um, it costs 25 gold, same as it does now, and it weighs one, uh, actually, actually it weighs the same as one coin. I think that's a misprint. I think they meant it to say it weighs 10 coins, uh, weighs one pound, um, cause water is a little heavy. Uh, you know, the volume of water is a little heavy. So I believe that's a misprint there. Um that they would have that and uh, so holy water then uh, water been prepared by a special cleric normally placed into a breakable bottle or gourd and hurled at a target uh, container smashes and target is splashed the holy water o only does the list of damage to undead monsters all other characters and monsters are unaffected by it except for being dampened um, and then if you're using optional weapon mastery rules, all characters have basic mastery level when using holy water. So, uh, the limitation is it only affects undead. Now, uh, AD&D, you had to go not to the player's handbook, but, but to the DM's guide for uh, holy and unholy water. Uh, there... There was a, uh, there is a price list for this, and it is uh, 25 gold. So, so far, 5th edition is 25, original rules is 25, 1st edition is 25. Very consistent there. Uh, but now, this gets into some interesting things of, well, actually, how much holy water do you get? Now, according to AD&D rules, you get 4 ounces um, or a quarter of a pint of holy water um, that will affect an area one foot in diameter. A splash will deal two hit points, and if you directly throw it on uh, something, it will deal 1d6 plus one hit points, or two to seven hit points. Uh, then let's see. Uh, holy water in second edition. Uh, no big surprise. Exactly the same as AD and D's first edition. One foot diameter area of effect, two to seven hit points, or one d six plus one for a direct hit, 
two hit points for splash damage and 25 gold piece cost. Then going to the player's handbook in third edition, uh, holy water damages undead creatures and evil outsiders almost as if it were acid. Uh, then uh, a flask can be thrown as a splash weapon. Treat this as a ranged touch attack with a range increment of 10 feet. Flask breaks if thrown against the body of a corporeal creature, but to use it against an incorporeal creature, you must open the flask and pour the holy water out. Uh, deals 2d4 hit points of damage to an undead creature or an evil outsider. Um, and then each creature within 5 feet of the point where the flask hits takes 1 point of damage from the splash. And the cost for these things is 25 gold. And the weight is one pound. And then in fourth edition, uh, I'm sh I can't imagine that there's not holy water in fourth edition. But the only thing I could find about holy water not, was not anything about a cost or a damage, but the fact that um, you that clerics can make it. So from the fourth edition sources that I have, I don't have any stats on what the holy water does as a damage. Uh, now, one of the things that's kind of cool is that this is a very consistent thing. So this is almost uh, one of the rare cases where you don't even need to look at the other editions because uh, the only thing that really differs, differs is the amount of damage and the type of damage. Uh, it's radiant in 5e, which makes sense. The radiance is usually associated with the gods or with the stars. And uh, so it also affects evil outsiders and undead. Or fiends, I should say, and undead. All right, well, I have been DM Galabon. This has been uh, Combat Saturday. If you like the content we're doing on this channel, please click the or please like the video uh click the subscribe subscribe button and uh click the notification bell so that you can be alerted every time we post something new to the channel uh, in the description you'll find out how you can follow me on all the social media platforms and if you have any interesting stories in, from your game of how holy holy water has worked whether good use by a player or good use by the dm against the players i would be very curious in uh learning about that all right everyone uh thank you very much for stopping by we hope that we will see you next week for the next combat saturday and between now and then good night everyone